Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ironworker Gaming Channel. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Lay Monarch Exotic Bow for use in the Crucible. Now this is a weapon that feels very unique in Destiny 2, even by exotic weapon standards. So if you haven't acquired it yet, that will be the first point we're going to jump into. Then we'll take a brief overview of the stats before hopping into the Crucible to analyze some pros and cons of the bow. And if you are a lower skill player of Destiny 2, fear not, because I will always keep you in mind in these weapon reviews. Just a friendly reminder if at any time you enjoy this video, that like button is there to show your support, or you could also subscribe to this channel to see more videos just like this. Well, I mean, not just like this, they're obviously going to be different weapons, but y you know what I'm saying, let's, let's get on with it. Now, the Lay Monarch. When I was playing on console, this bow felt great to me. I, I used this bow a ton. If I was pulling out a bow to use in the Crucible, this was the one I was grabbing. But, since switching to PC and doing, well, a bunch of different weapon reviews, I feel like I have neglected my old friend. So we're gonna take this bow out of the vault, take it into the Crucible, and see what it can do in the current sandbox and meta. Okay, pre-Shadowkeep, the Monarch was an RNG drop when finishing the Gofanon Forge. After Shadowkeep, there were some changes made. You now acquire the Monarch by completing the quest, Butterfly's Grace. So you're gonna have to own Forsaken, and you can pick this quest up from Ada One. It's gonna require you to forge 10 legendary weapon frames and eliminate some fallen. The thing that might trip you up is you're gonna need Ballistics Logs, which can be obtained by completing the two weekly bounties offered by Ada. Meaning this quest is gonna take you at least five weeks to complete but it is a really cool bow, so it's definitely worth it in my opinion. Lay Monarch is a Void Exotic Precision Frame Combat Bow with a draw time of 684, so roughly 0.7 seconds. Most of the stats here are on par or slightly above average when compared to other bows in this archetype, and there's really only two perks here I'd like to touch on. The first being Snapshot Sights. It's a fantastic perk to have on any weapon, but especially useful on bows and arguably a necessity if you're going to be taking a bow into PvP. The second is the intrinsic trait Poison Arrow. Arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poison arrows. Precision hits with poison arrows spread poison to nearby enemies, but there's a little more to it than that. We'll take a look at the base damage values first, and keep in mind, these are for a fully drawn bow. On a precision shot, a Monarch will do 142 damage. On a body shot landed, it will do 95. But that is only the base damage value for this bow. There's actually a second set of damage values we have to look at for the Le Monarch, because of the poison arrow intrinsic trait. Now to get this trait to proc, you have to let that arrow go within probably half a second of your bow being fully drawn, and the reward is exponentially more damage. The base impact damage on this poison arrow is 151, but the poison will do 7 ticks of damage at 3 points apiece, giving it 182 total damage on a precision shot landed. For the body shot, the impact damage is going to be 101, plus your 21 points of poison damage for a grand total of 122. And that's the first thing that just makes this bow feel so unique in Destiny 2. But there is more, and we'll touch on those when we get into the pros. So, by using this bow in the manner in which the game asks you to do it, gives you bonus damage. Bonus damage is always great. And the damage is pretty substantial, it's actually the highest potential damaging primary bow in the game. Now, it's not enough to outright one-shot kill a full health guardian, but it'll take them down to a sliver, leaving them susceptible to a one-shot from basically any weapon. Also, the poison damage spreading to other targets can net you easy one-hit kills in some situations. Landing a headshot on two separate enemy guardians that happen to be within close proximity to each other will put them both down. And to aid you in assuring that you get these poison arrows off consistently, the Monarch has several visual and audio cues to help you out. While they're not only aesthetically cool, they provide a lot of much appreciated feedback to the user. 
When you're aiming down sight and the bow is fully drawn, your ADS reticle will glow yellow and the lights at the tip of the arrow will glow blue. Once these lights go out, you will know you have held your draw for too long and you're getting no poison arrow with this shot. And for the audio cues, when you're firing off the poison arrow, it's like a nice crisp snap that it makes when it leaves the bow. But when the poison arrow is not procced, you'll hear a dull thud upon release. Now these are both great tools for lower skill players, or someone picking up this bow for the first time. I mean, bows generally, they're not the easiest weapons to be using in the Crucible, and this one lets you know if you're doing it right. Also the poison damage from the Monarch really can give you some good information here. Now when you tag an enemy guardian with one of these poison arrows, they're gonna know it. When they get hit by a regular bow, they may consider standing their ground with you, but when a monarch is in play, the poison damage is probably going to leave them heading for cover. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, because the damage ticks coming off of them will let you know what direction they moved, how fast they were moving, and how far they moved. Simply by watching the damage numbers, you can get some great information, albeit only for a few moments, but this can really aid you in deciding what your next move is going to be. Also, the aim assist on this bow feels great. Pulling up the hidden stats on Destiny Tracker, aim assist is coming in at 70, which is fairly average compared with the other bows in the archetype. But on console, I don't know what it is, but these the hitboxes for a Monarch feel really, really generous. Oh yeah, and it can also do this. Yep, if you have a 20% damage buff on you from some source, you can one-shot a Guardian, and that's important, because that is fun. Now, there, there's no doubt this is a great bow, but there are a couple things I did not like about it while reviewing it, and we'll get into those now. Now, I gotta say, a lot of these issues I didn't pick up on until I moved to PC. When I was playing on console, I might have said this is the perfect bow for the way I play the game. But when reviewing it, I found a couple things that bugged me a little bit. First off, that yellow reticle when you're aiming down sights, man is that a chunky boy. I feel like I lose a lot of targets behind that thing when I'm trying to track them. My next minor annoyance is how the bow pops when you're fully drawn on it. Now I guess it's a nice indicator to let you know when the arrow is fully drawn in the bow, but I just... I don't like how the screen jumps that little bit. It's distracting to me, I wish it wasn't there. Next one on the list is a pro, but it's also a con, but it's still a pro. And that's the fact that players won't stand there and slug it out with you if you tag them with a poison arrow. As a less skilled player, I prey on people making bad decisions. When an enemy player gets hit by a monarch, they really think twice about peeking around that corner again which puts the decision in my hands. Do I stand there and wait? Do I pursue the kill? Do I completely disengage? And yeah, it's great to have options, but I'd rather the guy just stand there and let me shoot him again, you know? And the last con, and something I really struggled with while using this, was the fact I couldn't trust this thing when firing from the hip. Now, I'm not sure how bad of an accuracy hit this thing takes in hip fire, but I feel like it's gotta be a lot. I mean, there were times where I was fully drawn, center circle was right on my target, release the arrow, and nothing happens. It, it, it's like the arrow just vaporized. Now you might look at me and be like, Ironworker, that's because your aim is absolute dog doo doo. And you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but I ended up aiming down sights in almost every situation, and a lot of times when I needed to be firing from the hip and wasn't, it didn't end well. So, my thoughts on Le Monarch. It's undoubtedly a great bow. It does a lot of things really, really well in PvP. In my opinion, it's probably the second best bow to be using in the Crucible. And it's fine if you disagree with me, but I'll take the Wish Ender with the wall hacks over the raw damage of Le Monarch. But nevertheless, Le Monarch is fantastic. If you are willing to invest a little bit of time in this bow and practice with it, allow those subtle nuances to become second nature to you, the Monarch will serve you just fine in the Crucible. So the verdict, I suppose, is guilty. Guilty of being awesome. <laughs> uh, it, 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. Just just use it. Use it if you want to use a bow. Yeah, it's probably a good time to wrap things up after that. So if you enjoyed the video and found it useful in any way, feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more Destiny 2 reviews, guides, and discussions all brought to you by yours truly, consider hitting that subscribe button to support this channel. If you'd like to check me out live, I do stream on Twitch, look for Ironworker814 over there, drop me a follow to get notified whenever I am live. You could contact Ironworker814 on Twitter, but the best way to get a hold of me is simply by leaving a comment down below. I read and respond to all my comments because you are important and I respect your time. With all that being said, thank you for spending a piece of your day viewing my content. You guys are awesome and I will catch you on the next one.